Tracing Changes Through a Thousand Years, Part 2 Many developments occurred between 700 and 1750, which made the study about this period difficult and challenging for historians. At different moments in this period, various new technologies came into existence. Some of them were the Persian wheel in irrigation, the spinning wheel in weaving, and firearms in combat. In this period, people from different corners of the world traveled large distances and came to the subcontinent to carve their fortune. Hence, this period was also of great mobility. People brought new foods and beverages like potatoes, corn, chilies, tea and coffee along with them. The arrival of these people also brought different ideas that led to economic, political, social and cultural changes in the subcontinent. A group named Rajput became important in this period. This name came from Rajaputra, which meant the son of a ruler. This term was usually applied in between the 8th and 14th centuries to a group of warriors who claimed their caste as Kshatriya. This term was not only for rulers and chieftains, even soldiers and commanders who performed duties in the armies of different monarchs all over the subcontinent were termed as Rajputs. Poets attributed qualities like a chivalric code of conduct, extreme valor and a great sense of loyalty to the Rajputs. In this period, there were some other groups of people like the Marathas, Sikhs, Jaks, Ahoms, and Kaisthas as well. They also used the opportunities of the age to mark their political importance. All over this period, forests were cut gradually to extend agricultural land. In some areas, this change was faster than the other areas. These changes forced many forest dwellers to migrate from their habitats to other places. People who did not migrate started tilling the land and became peasants. These new groups of peasants gradually started to come under the influence of regional markets, chieftains, priests, monasteries and temples. They became a part of large complex societies they had to pay taxes, offer goods and services to local lords. As a result, many noticeable differences came into existence among the peasants. Some indulged only in agricultural activities. Some indulged in agricultural as well as in cattle farming, while others did artisanal work along with agricultural activities during the lean season. Then, as society became more differentiated, people were grouped into jatis or sub-castes. They were ranked based on their occupations and backgrounds. These ranks varied as per the power, influence and resources that came under the control of jati members. From area to area, the status of the same jati could differ. Each jati had its own rules and regulations to manage the conduct of its members. An assembly of elders of a jati made all the rules and regulations of the jati. In some areas, this assembly was known as jati panchayat. Members of a jati had to follow the rules and regulations of their jati and the village in which they lived. A chieftain governed many villages. Together, they were only one small part of a state. 
Now, let us learn about different empires and the regions that came under an empire. Large states like the states ruled by the Cholas, Tughlaqs or Mughals encompassed many regions. The Delhi Sultan, Ghiasuddin Balban, also had a big empire. According to a Sanskrit prashasti, the empire of this ruler was stretched from Bengal in the east to Ghazni in Afghanistan in the west and also included all of South India. People of different regions such as Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Karnataka, Maharashtra and Gujarat were afraid of his armies and hence usually ran away from him. As a result, historians consider these as exaggerated claims of conquests. At the same time, they are also trying to understand why rulers kept claiming to have control over different parts of the subcontinent. By 700, many regions had their distinct geographical dimensions and their own cultures. These regions were connected with specific ruling dynasties. Also, there were notable disputes between these states. Some dynasties like the Cholas, Khaljis, Tughlaqs and Mughals expanded their empire in diverse regions. However, some of these empires were not equally stable and successful. In the 18th century, as the Mughal Empire declined, many regional states re-emerged. However, the personality and nature of these regions had been altered due to years of imperial and pan-regional rule. As a result, there were many similarities in the laws of governance, management of economy, elite cultures and languages.